The Scottish Parliament has held a special debate to celebrate the publication of the digitised archive of the legendary nuclear disarmament activist and researcher John Ainsley's work by the Nuclear Information Service. The motion also seeks to recognise the contribution by the late Reverend to the public deliberation on nuclear weapons and welcomes the return of the manuscript the to the National Library of Scotland for safekeeping. And I call on Bill Kidd to open the debate. Today we're here to recognise the remarkable contributions of the late Reverend John Ainsley to the debate on nuclear weapons. Now, John was not just a leading man and a leading figure in Scotland's anti-nuclear movement. He was someone whose life's work and deep commitment to peace profoundly shaped the discourse on disarmament here and abroad. I would like to take a moment to welcome those from the Nuclear Information Centre and the Scottish Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament to the public gallery and uh, just say your efforts are vital. The Nuclear Information Service plays an essential role in this ongoing effort, providing rigorous, reliable information on the UK's nuclear weapons programme. Richard Leonard, MSP, proudly recalled a publication he and John Ainsley had co-authored on behalf of Scottish CND and the Scottish Trades Union Congress, and celebrated John's ability to pose critical questions and his pioneering freedom of information work. It's a pamphlet which John and I co-authored, a co-production between the Scottish Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament and the Scottish Trades Union Congress. Trident, not safe, not economic, not wanted is its title. Jamie Green, a Conservative MSP, acknowledged that despite being a supporter of the UK's nuclear weapons programme, he believed John's work had enriched the debate and made the weapons programme safer. But what Reverend Ainsley did is challenge the existence of it through substance. He scrutinised the standards of the deterrent. He challenged the risks associated with it. He maintained uh, uh, the, the, the many reports, which I don't have time to go into, were, were fascinating to read, and I look forward to seeing the National Records of Scotland when they come out. Rona Mackay, MSP, Thank drew attention to John's officer. remarkable life journey, from an officer in the British the Army to a conscientious to objector to coordinator of Scottish CND. Closing the debate, Cabinet Secretary for Constitution, however, External Affairs and Culture, Angus Robertson, reaffirmed the Scottish Government's commitment to removing nuclear weapons as quickly and safely as possible after a vote for independence. The Scottish Government's position on nuclear weapons is, cl is clear, it's long-standing. Uh, we are firmly opposed to the possession, to the threat, the use of nuclear weapons. They are strategically and economically wrong, they are indiscriminating uh, and they are devastating in their impacts. Their use would bring unspeakable humanitarian suffering and widespread environmental damage. Janet Fenton, Secretary of Scottish CND, pointed out that these moving tributes to John's life and work from politicians across the political spectrum really underline his contribution to the debate on nuclear weapons. She welcomed the fact that more people can access the archive and understand John's unique contribution now that it has gone online. Indeed, David Cullen, director of the Nuclear Information Service, received feedback from researchers and scholars that the digitised archive has been very useful. To access the archive, please go to nuclearinfo.org and visit the archive section.